Now we don't want the text to be right along the outer edge of the overlay. So we're going to set a padding attribute. I'm going to set padding on the top and bottom to 10 pixels. I'm going to set the padding on the left and right of 13 pixels. So I'll push it in slightly from the outer edge of the overlay. We'll set the color of the text to white. So I'm going to type in pound FFF. And we'll set the background color of the overlay. So that's the background of the overlay we're going to animate later to black. So I'm going to put in pound zero zero zero. So you can make it whatever color you want it to be there. Now I'm going to set the width to 924 pixels. Now it's 950 pixels, but by the time we take off the width of 13 pixels on either side of that overlay for the padding, it equals 924 pixels there. I'm also going to set the display to none. So this overlay, the caption won't appear until the jQuery slider plugin animates it. Okay, so I've just switched over to the source code now and we're going to start attaching our jQuery library and slider plugin. So place your cursor just below your style sheet there. We're going to open up the scripthooks.txt file and we're going to copy all of the script hooks there. So press Control C or right click and copy and paste them in just below your CSS file. Fantastic. Now, a lot of beginners will have trouble setting up the scripts, so I'm going to show you how to do it. You'll notice that the source, it's in a folder called js slash jQuery min.js and here's my js folder with the file. Now, if you highlight the uh, quotation marks and everything inside of it, press delete. Open up that first quotation mark and you'll be able to browse for your file. So if you click on the browse button there, now you, all you need to do is search for the file which is called the jQuery 1.4.2.min.js. Double click on that and it will put in the source location for you. So no matter where it is inside of your site, you should be able to hook it up. You can do the same with the slider plugin uh, JavaScript file there. I'm going to delete all of it including the quotations. I'm going to open up the first quotation and browse for the s3slider.js script file. Double click on that and it's now been inserted into that script tag. Okay now this is our script hook. It waits for the document to completely load and then it looks for the S3 slider div and applies the S3 slider plugin. Now this timeout selector is set to 4000 milliseconds so that will be 4 seconds and uh, if we change that to say 2000 you will get a 2 second um, delay before it switches the image. So I'm just going to preview that in Chrome now so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to save the changes. So this will change out every 2 seconds with this current setting. So right now you've got an image rotator and fader without the overlay. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's go back into Dreamweaver now. And it's time to start styling the caption overlays, which will animate into position every time a corresponding image appears. The descriptions for each image are inside each span tag. So if we set a class attribute for each span tag, we can tell it where to appear alongside the image. So for instance, if I set a first image with a semantic class of top, we can set a CSS selector and define the overlay criteria. By calling it top, I want it to animate and appear from the top of the corresponding image. Okay, so I'm back in my CSS document now and I'm going to create a comment just to define where these styles will be, the overlay style. So I know that if I need to go back and adjust them, I know that they'll be at the bottom of the document under the heading of overlay styles. So let's set the class now. It's dot top and open and close curly braces. And I'm going to set the uh, position to top zero. So I want it to appear from the top. I want it to appear from the left. This will make sure it's bucked up against the left side and top of the uh, image. I'm going to set the width to be 924 pixels. That's 950 pixels minus 13 pixels of padding on each side. And I'm going to set the height to be 60 pixels. That means it will encroach 60 pixels inside of the image. 
Okay, so I'm going to preview that in Chrome to make sure that the overlay is working correctly. And we can see it appearing from the top. It's encroaching into the image or over the top of the image by 60 pixels. And I'm going to have to press refresh because we've only set one span tag class for one of the images. So it's only going to appear on that first image and then it's going to disappear, rotate onto the next image. But there's no overlay set for that. So that's working correctly. We'll go back into Dreamweaver now and we'll set the rest of the class attributes for the rest of the images. And I'd like them to go from the top to the right, to the bottom and then to the left. So the next span tag I'm gonna set will be a class of right. Okay, now it's worth mentioning at this point that if you wanted all of your images to only appear from the top, then you could name all of the classes top. If you want to do them all to appear from the right, you could name them span class equals right. Um, but for, for now, we're going to go from the top to the right to the bottom to the left. So I've just named that one bottom. And this next span tag is going to be span class equals left. And we've got one more image left. And I'm going to put that as uh, span class equals top. We'll just go back from the beginning again. So it'll be span, span class equals top. Okay, so we'll have to go back into the CSS and uh, define these new selectors. So we've got um, right, bottom and left set. So they're pretty much the same. We just need to change out a few of the details. So I'm going to copy the dot top selector and all of its properties. And I'm going to paste it another three times and we'll just over type the uh, selectors. So the first one we'll set will be bottom. So we'll go top, then bottom, then right, then left. And um, I'm going to change the bottom where it says dot top. I'm going to change that to dot bottom. So I'm just going to highlight it and type bottom. Okay, so we want this to come from the bottom. So I'm going to over type the, where it says top and I'm going to change that to bottom. Uh, it can come from the left and be nudged in from zero there. That's fine. Uh, the, the width can be 924 pixels, that's fine also, and the height can be 60 pixels. So it will come over the top of the image by 60 pixels. Now the next selector will be the right selector, so I'm going to highlight that and over type it by typing right. Okay, so we'll get this to appear from the right. We want it to appear from the bottom. And the width will set to 200 pixels, so it will be 200 pixels from the right of that image and uh, the height will be the whole height of the the image so the image will be 300 pixels but uh, we've got 10 pixels of padding so I'll set 290 pixels there and now we'll set the left selector so I'm going to over type that with left and this left selector is going to be pretty much just like the right selector except we want it to come from the top when it's come from the left, we want it to be a width of 200 pixels and we'll set the height to be 290 pixels also. Um, so we're done now with our selectors. We'll just go and test that inside of a browser now. Okay, so the first image, which was dot top, uh, the overlay is appearing from the top and that's appearing correctly. The right image, uh, the dot right, that's appearing and taking up the whole screen. So there's obviously something overriding the selector we set there. The bottom image appears to be fine. The overlay is overlaying by 60 pixels. That's fantastic. And then the left, it's taking up the whole screen again. So there is a something that's overriding our left and right selectors, which we'll need to address. So if we go up to our span tag and have a look at that, we can see that the width is set to 924 pixels. Um, there's an issue though with that because um, it's telling our left and right, it's overriding our left and right selectors and saying that it needs to be a whole width of 924. So what it's doing is it's taking up the whole screen and being instead of being width of 200 pixels, and it's also taking up the whole screen. So we're gonna make sure that the width is definitely set to 200 pixels and we're gonna set a, a, a selector of important so that's an exclamation mark and important and that will tell it to no matter what that it needs to stick to this um, rule that it needs to be a width of 200 pixels there. Now those of you who are using Dreamweaver CS5 you should be able to pick that from a drop down menu if you're using CS4 uh, you'll have to type it manually. 
Okay, so if we look at our right image, which should appear into focus now, it's appearing correctly from the bottom on the right hand side. That's great. Then we should have our bottom image appearing at the bottom by 60 pixels. That's great. And um, our left image should appear, our overlay should appear from the top to the bottom from the left hand side. That's fantastic. Okay, so we're looking good now. Okay, so we've taken care of the conflict that affected the left and right selectors. Now all we need to do is um, set an opacity on the overlay so there's a transparency when it appears over the top of the image so we can still see the image in the background. So I'm going to type in opacity with a colon and I'm going to set it to 0 0.7 and put a semicolon on the end and that will take care of Firefox Chrome and Apple Safari. Now for all the rest of the gecko based Mozilla engine um, we're going to set a dash moz dash opacity colon 0 0.7 and a semicolon on the end. Okay now to take care of the opacity settings for Internet Explorer uh, we're going to set a filter an alpha filter and the the Opacity settings for Internet Explorer have been around way before any for Safari or Firefox um, or Chrome. So it's filter colon alpha and then open bracket opacity equals seven zero and then we'll close the bracket and then put a semicolon on the end there. Okay, so that should take care of all of the opacity settings in all of the major browsers. Now what I have to do is a little bit of cross browser testing to make sure these opacity settings are working correctly. So I'll check that in uh, Internet Explorer first and we can see that we can see that the image is appearing behind there. So we're looking quite good there and uh, everything seems to be anim animating correctly. So we're looking good. Okay, so next I'll check it in Chrome, um, and that's a good indication if it's working in Chrome, then it should be working in Apple Safari because they share the same rendering engine, and it's looking good also inside of Chrome. So let's switch and check it in Firefox and uh, make sure that's rendering correctly, and we're looking good there too. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and remember there will eventually be a full write-up of this tutorial at my website dreamweavertutorial.co.uk If you have any questions then please leave a message at the bottom of this video. Take care and bye for now.